We're at the launch of the Tata Altros and of course a whole range of new cars from Tata Motors and with us today is Mr. Rajendra Petkar, the Chief Technology Officer at Tata Motors and Mr. David Ward, President of the Global NCAP. So let's get straight into it and hear all about the safety and the systems they've developed for the new range of cars. Uh, thank you for speaking to us and uh, congratulations on the launch of, well, four new cars today actually, uh, right, the Altros and all your facelifted ones as well. So I just wanted to talk to you about safety because that's been, I think, a big push from Tata Motors and as we just saw at the launch, uh, you've stressed very emphatically that Tata aims to have the safest cars in all of their segments. Uh, why that why that goal see if you look at the country india we know that uh, the maximum fatalities which are happening on the highways of the india is all related to the road crashes and uh, the number as high as 150000 lives which are lost in the crash related uh, fatalities is something which is actually alarming and uh, therefore we feel that uh, you know we should take the safety as a top priority as far as the organization is concerned. And Tata Motor has a legacy of building the safe cars. I am going back to late 90s, right. when we had uh, the first built the crash test facility in the country. In fact, when at a time there were no regulations which are required for compliance to the crash norm. Take the example of the Indica that was launched around the same time. And we used to give the advertisement in the newspaper which used to say that the Indica built with 1000 kg rigid steel frame. The idea was to actually signify that safety is something which is of paramount importance to Tata Motor and something which should be of importance to the customers also. So we want basically the safety to be the, you know, the one of the key attributes for the Tata Motor products and therefore we will see the manifestation of the safety into products after products. So what started in 2016 with the four star being accorded to Jess by Global NCAP and then we had the four star to Nexon, then five star to Nexon and now the five star to Altros and today we just talked about the, the four star for the entry level hatch and the mid-size uh, mid sedan Tiguan. Right. That's an interesting point that you've just mentioned. Uh, while thanks to Global NCAP, uh, you know, foundations like them, safety is getting more uh, awareness in India. Uh, Tata, you already have a crash test facility way back and with the Indica too, uh, you know, so do, do you see this as a, there's a business case in safety? Uh, I mean, I have to ask that question later. Yeah, so actually this is a question which is oftenly asked and, uh, you know, in our opinion, as far as the Tata Motor is concerned, we feel that the safety is something is not to be treated as a privilege, but it is a right of the consumer being delivered at an affordable price point. And what I mean by that, if you take the, now these four cars which uh, today uh, got uh, launched, each of the car is within its own uh, segment and the segment has got certain price point. And when we say that we are delivering the safety up and affordable cost, it's something to stay within the price bracket. So we are not going to charge a premium of say 1 lakh rupees or 2 lakh rupees just because we are compliant to a, a 5 star or the 4 star. So, I don't think the consumer today that uh, you can say that okay, you know that safety is not important and therefore we are not giving the features on the safety. I think it is what we have seen after the Nexon uh, 5 star. The people that I have come across, I have spoken to many media people, many dealers, many customers, uh, government people and the one thing that comes out very clearly from everybody of them is that for them the price is secondary. Actually it is the safety first. And this is something which has been often in the past neglected sort of an attribute of a product. And I think the consumers are willing to pay for that and the next one is a glowing example of that. So you do see a shift happening yes. uh, towards yes. safety. Yes. Right. And uh, Mr. what a question to you uh, as Mr. Petkar was just saying, uh, you know that um, consumers are getting aware and your foundation has been pushing this a, a lot, uh, right, getting um, safer cars for India. Uh, as your campaign goes. Uh, I just wanted to ask you something about the testing procedure when you when you say safer cars for India. Uh, if you could just share with us how do you all go about selecting cars, uh, you know, and uh, testing them and what are the standard tests that every car has to undergo? Sure. Well, we, um, I mean, first of all, just echoing uh, what we've just heard, I think what we've seen in India is, is an incredible success in building a market for safer vehicles. And that's a combination of things. It's consumer awareness on the one hand, and then it's also government setting minimum regulations. 
and those two acting dynamically as, and, and then we've seen the huge success of Tata now setting a completely new benchmark with two five-star cars. So that's really fantastic. Um, the actual tests um, we do, are they're, they're based on um, uh, occupant protection crash tests for uh, front impact and side impact. They're very well established, used by NCAPs all around the world. Uh, they're also essentially the same as the regulatory test, but with the front uh, impact run at a higher speed. So the regulatory test is 56 kilometers an hour, our test is 64, which is exactly the same as all the NCAPs around the world now. And the reason for the higher test speed is really two. For one, it's where the, the, there's the greatest risk of fatal injury, and obviously that's what we're trying to reduce. Also, the, the regulatory test was simply a pass or fail minimum standard. With a consumer test, you're trying to stretch performance, and you're trying to measure performance between different manufacturers. So the higher speed helps you do that. So the frontal impact test is, is a very critical one, and it's still where most um, uh, vehicle to vehicle crashes happen. Then there's a side impact test with a trolley, which is actually the same as the regulatory test. Um, and then um, gradually we're evolving the whole test program so that from next year to get five star, you also have to have electronic stability control. Okay. Uh, fitted, so active safety. The anti skid right. system. And it was particularly pleasing to see that with the up uh, rated Nexon. Uh, announced today that has ESC uh, a standard, which is a big, big step forward too. Will we see uh, you all also including maybe rear impact testing or rollover and things like that? Uh, not, not yet. Okay. Uh, I mean, the, you, you have to start with what are the, the the greatest causes of crashes, and if you if you kind of order the priorities, front impact, first side, so on. And it, it's we're resource constrained. Um, I mean, we, the way we fund our program is that we're, we're very fortunate to be supported by the Bloomberg Philanthropy from the US, FI Foundation in the UK, and they help us um, purchase the vehicles when we're testing ones that manufacturers haven't volunteered to test. Uh, of course, manufacturers who are doing well, like Tata, they're very happy to have their cars tested. So we have two, two basic uh, sources of testing. And uh, so we are, we're constrained by the availability of resources. Sure. But uh, we're, we're, the good news is that we, we, we're being funded further for uh, quite a few more years. So we'll, we'll continue this program for some time yet. So, yeah, you said you know uh, getting cars from manufacturers. And I wanted to ask you a little bit about that. Because in the past, what we've seen is uh, you all have always taken like, the base models. Yeah. This time with Tata, it was uh, at a higher end or a higher spec model. And also it was before the start of sale. I think in the past it was always after start of sale. So what was the reasoning behind that? Well, it, it's, it's all again normal practice for end caps. Uh, with, obviously, when, when end caps start to mature, uh, it's very good uh, to work with the manufacturer so that at launch they can announce the result. So uh, we're, we're very happy to do that. That's typical of your NCAP, all the other NCAPs around the world. And there's simply a process that you obviously have to work very carefully to make sure that it's, um, it, it's the same production identical model. And we, we usually select from a, a production line based on the uh, vehicle. So that selection's up to you? Yeah, selection's up to us. So there's no, there's no chance of anything okay. funny happening. And, and, uh, but, but of course, it, 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 in the end, it helps the consumer. It would be kind of, if you delay the result until some time later, uh, when a new product is launched, it creates interest in the market. We want to be able to tell the consumer what, how we rate the vehicle straight away. So this should be a standard going forward, uh, testing cars before they're launched, uh, assuming manufacturers. We would uh, we would very much like that. Of course, I mean, the more okay. manufacturers that want to have their vehicles tested, right. the better. Uh, of course, it's a, it, 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 there is a selection bias in here because no manufacturer who isn't producing a very good car is going to rush forward and say, "Hey, hey, Mr. Ward, would you please test our?" Which is which is why we need support from the likes of Bloomberg to be able to to, to choose ourselves. Uh, those manufacturers that we think aren't quite, you know, up right. to the mark. And our, our program, unashamedly, is a sort of carrot and stick approach. And uh, which is why at the beginning, it's not surprising when we when we launched this in 2014. I mean, all the results were not very good. Um, uh, but we kind of expected that. And then you see this fantastic evolution uh, where where manufacturers step forward. Um, so we hope that will grow, and uh, and and more. The more we can test, the better. So and also, if you could just share with us the the rationale behind choosing a higher spec model this time? Uh, yeah, well, it, we do, uh, where manufacturers are showing significant effort, uh, again, it's in the consumer interest to understand uh, the choices they can make. 
And so uh, allowing that uh, is, is, is worth it to inform the public. But of course, the, the, our basic standard practice is, is, is entry-level models. But we will vary that in order to inform the market. And in the end, this is the critical thing, is that the more informed the consumer is, uh, the more likely they are to make the, 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 the best choice for them at the most affordable price. And I think what is so interesting here is that you know, back in 2014 when we launched, people were saying you know, in India there's no interest in safety issues, uh, people are very price sensitive, etc., and that you're not going to succeed. Well, I think that's been proved completely wrong. And really the proof is in the, in the marketplace here. You can see the, more, the, more the cars, interest and, yeah. and demand. And uh, Mr. Petkar, uh, you know, we, we were just seeing um, that apparently an uh, alloy wheel uh, places a higher load on the structure in a crash. Uh, so is that, uh, is that one of the reasons why you all would want to test a, a top-end model also? And also, if you could just explain to us why does that happen, uh, you know, the alloy? It being stronger, I would assume. So it's like this. I think the, the rationale behind choosing a car for the crash test is a twofold. One is that, as what uh, David said, is about what the consumer preference, you know, which are the car which they are likely to buy. And if that car is going to be in the big volume, then that is one criteria. The second criteria, which is a bit technical criteria, is about within the family, what is the worst case. And if the worst case is something which is, let us say, the top end model, then that is something which gets picked up for the crash test. Now, coming to the subject of the alloy wheel, yes, alloy wheel, when there is a, uh, the, the impact that happens, Actually, the brunt is taken by the alloy wheel to start with. I mean, in the time domain, if you see as the crash happens, the that impact actually moves from the front bumper, it goes to the tires, it goes to the alloy wheel, and then from there, you know, then it propagates further. And therefore, the alloy wheel, they do play an important role, and uh, therefore, it's a technology by itself. And, uh, you know, how you design the spokes, what's going to be the elongation, what's going to be the strength of the alloy wheel what's the manufacturing process, what's the yield of that manufacturing process. So there are a lot of technical details which are there behind in choosing the alloy wheel as a concept for a crash. And you know, another question to you, so uh, when you engineer your cars to, to meet a certain standard, like let's say the five star, what does it cost you as a manufacturer to do that, you know, uh, in, in terms of development cost? hitting that five star so target. it will be difficult to single out uh, just you know for the for the for the purpose of the five star uh, if you look at today uh, these four cars uh, that we have commercially launched it not just the safety that was the 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 attribute but besides safety there are many other attributes so it's all the work which has been done together to deliver the wholesale performance at the full vehicle level and uh, coming to the crash thanks to the the in-house capability that Tata Motor has nurtured. As I said, we started in 1997 with the crash facility, the first one in the country. And then we have this whole uh, set of uh, the, the engineers who are basically the expert in the layout, they are expert in the CAE, they are expert in doing the, the crash test. And the most important is how to analyze the information. And I must also add here that the contribution with the GNCAP they have played in terms of you know imparting that learning experience to Tata Motor also has been great. And uh, so therefore, when we talk about the cost, it's all about how we have done the optimization, how we have made a choice of a material. Are we able to do much more of a digital activity than physical crashes? And uh, you do those hundreds of the iterations, finally you come to a solution, which then you test it. So it is very difficult to assign the d, &D cost. I got it, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I can only say that it's a part of the whole program. And uh, our approach would be to deliver the, the safety performance, which is going to be competitive. It's not like, you know, adding the significant cost. And also, when you said development, uh, you know, the, uh, the Nexon is a five-star car and it's on, the, uh, on a different platform from your Ultras. Uh, what about the Tiago and Tigor? Because they are on similar platforms, but not five-star. They're on the same platform or similar platform to a Nexon. So why is that difference there? Uh, you know, I mean, four star is still a great rating, but yeah. you know, what is what is so the I difference? So I was I was about to say that because uh, both the Tiago and Tigor they are in the entry level uh, hatch and the sedan, and uh, we wanted to be anyway the best in the class, and therefore we started with the uh, to deliver uh, the four star, and of course uh, we are not going to stop here. 
and this is i want to say that uh, the journey towards the five star will continue uh, but i think it would suffice to say that in whichever the segment that we are in we would like to be the success uh, offering the success the cars okay okay great so we can obviously look forward to uh, further and further improvements uh, from of what course. i'm understanding of course uh, from what you're saying safety is never done okay well, that that's nice to hear and uh, if we could also share with us you know for uh, your plans for your other vehicles uh, will this extend for tata motors into the commercial vehicles as well uh, certain uh, certain crash standards and things like that yeah so as far as the commercial vehicles are concerned it's a big range you know right. so we have right from the small commercial vehicle Correct, all the way yeah. going up to the trucks and so, multi axle so, vehicles so, and all that so different vehicles they have different duty cycle different profile and different requirements of uh, the safety and uh, it's a good balance which is need to be made between the active safety and the passive safety there and uh, for the commercial vehicles trucks it's basically the active safety how to you know uh, prevent the occurrence of a crash is something how to prevent the roll over you know how to actually make sure that we have the proper package in terms of the uh, the brake system uh, the esc for example there are many other technologies which become more more relevant in the case of the commercial, commercial vehicle, vehicle compared to right. in the passenger cars correct correct so i think your focus will will be there yes right yes right great great so thank you mr petkar thank you mr war i think that's all the time we have for you know we'd love to sit and chat but yes. i know you're busy today so thanks again and congratulations thank once again thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.